Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> well, thank you, Jack. If you weren't excited about the China opportunity when you arrived, there is no doubt you are now. And now I have the privilege of inviting back Prime Minister Justin Trudeau back to the stage to join Jack and I for a discussion before we end today's program. Well, great to be here again. <laughs> great to be here as well. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so we heard from Jack that if you miss China, you miss the future. And you know, 1.4 billion consumers. Like, do you think this is true? And do you think Canadian businesses are ready? I think Canadian businesses have been very lucky for a long time to have a really big market directly to our south uh, in the United States. And might we have got a little distracted with that. <laughs> well, we, we've built up uh, our success. I mean, so many Canadian companies, you talk to them and say, have you thought about trading internationally? They say, no, no, we don't tra trade internationally. We just trade to the United States. Right. They're already trading yes. internationally. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's something we that... We had to be. I mean, we're 2% of We had to be, uh, and we needed that market access. But we take it for granted, and uh, we need to now realize that there are what we are able to do in creating success in Canada uh, is relevant to the world. We take uh, tremendous pride in our diversity and having uh, communities with people from every corner of the world uh, in, in all of our neighborhoods, at businesses. We now need to look at uh, being bolder, being uh, less modest, less quiet, uh, and get out and realize that what we do well in Canada, uh, we can and should share with the world. And uh, the the success of China in uh, getting people out of poverty, in creating uh, 500 million people in the middle class, uh, means there is a market there that is excited about what Canada is doing. And we just have to realize that even though it's further physically, what Alibaba means, what uh, the internet means is, it's really not that far in terms of finding your customers. And it's incredibly worth it. And it's a great, exciting, exciting opportunity. It's great. Great opportunity. Right. So Jack, people often say that going to China is just too hard, right? There's language, um, your English is amazing by the way. <laughs> the distance, the culture, the red tape, the regulations that are one way and that change even more when you're successful. You know, Canadians might say, well, it's easier to go to the US as you were saying, France or the UK, but why should China be on the top of companies' international strategies? Yeah, I, I, this is first, doing business in any city or any different country is difficult. Totally. Right, so as an entrepreneur, don't think there's a lot of hanging fruits there. No, <laughs> it's always difficult yeah. as an entrepreneur. Yeah. You, as an entrepreneur, you know that there's no wrong you have. The only thing is you start to plant it now and you get it. Right. And the second is that the opportunity. Yeah. Well, there's no country in the whole world today have like a 300 million middle class and soon growing to 500 million middle class. And second, China is transforming. Yeah. China in the past 30 years focused on exporting. Next 30 years, we'll focus on importing. Mr. Uh, President Xi said, in the next five years, China will import 8 trillion US dollars. Because the China today, when you have such a hot, such a huge growing demanding, huge growing demanding from the middle class, they need great stuff. <laughs> they they want need a high stuff. quality food, agriculture things, and but I don't think China can produce that much high quality bread. So this is like a China is going to be the opportunity. And the other things, as entrepreneur, we one thing we have to do is curiosity and learn. Yeah. So by learning, there, there, if there are so many people already doing business in China, why you cannot? If Lululemon can do it, <laughs> if Canada Goose can do it, why you cannot do it? Yeah. So as I, this is what I want to prove. 18 years ago in my apartment, I talked to the, the 18 founders. I said, we're not only proving internet e-commerce. I want to prove one thing. If Jack Ma 
And these 18 people can be successful. 80% of the people in the world can be successful. We don't have the money. We don't have anything. I, mean, I don't have a rich father or powerful fa parents or uncle. We, up to today, we did not get even $1 from China banks. So if we can make it, you can make it. The only thing is that you have to think big, think the future, and start to do now. So China, nobody can afford to losing that huge opportunity. So yeah. Africa is good, but also takes very difficult. So any country is difficult. But this is just a big reward, and I know we have just an enormous amount of ambitious Canadians in the room today ready to build this. Yep. Um, so, Prime Minister, what's the government doing to help more Canadians export today? Well, I think a big part of it is just shifting the frame a little bit. I mean, what we're trying to point out is that uh, what Canadians are doing, what uh, Canadians should be proud of ourselves, uh, is world class. I mean, we're trying to compete in a world where China, with one and a half billion people, is uh, rising, is exporting, is importing, is an extremely powerful player. We've got 35 million people in Canada. We need to get the very Tiny. best out of every one of us. Uh, and we need to be bold and ambitious. And we need to realize that we do have these extraordinary uh, values, qualities, uh, and products to share with the world. But we're competing with a world that is filled with people who are out there saying, we're number one, we're the best, you need to do our stuff. Canadians, we tend to be sometimes a little more modest, a little more <laughs> cautious, a little more private. Uh, we need uh, to push, we need to get over that hump. And that's why uh, Canada has been so focused as a government uh, on working with partners like Alibaba, uh, on working with uh, e-commerce giants uh, to get people to realize the opportunities for growth, for jobs, uh, for, for, uh, for entrepreneurs to succeed in the world by getting out there, by realizing that um, you know, selling across the street uh, is fine, but selling around the world is not much harder. The products we make, the quality, the brand, I mean, people look at that maple leaf and they say, oh, okay, that's a guarantee of good values, uh, good products, uh, good, good, good approach to things, environmentally responsible. I mean, there's a great brand we have. We just need to do a better job of elevating because I know that as people you know, eat uh, lobsters from the East Coast, as they try on Arcteryx jackets, as they uh, discover maple syrup and how good it is in cooking, as they discover all the things that we do well, there will be room for tremendous success. And as a government, you'll see from the, the Canada Pavilion out there on the trade show floor, there to help you with everything for all your questions from, from you know, how do you, how do you, you know, get through the red tape or how do you uh, launch or how do you uh, you know get your space on, on on the mall how do you get the Canadian support how do we how do we deal with IP issues all those different things we are there to help you succeed because when small businesses succeed in Canada all Canadians succeed yes <laughs> absolutely absolutely they, they certainly do and small business yeah. has been the backbone of this economy for a very long time so let's you know, Jack, let's shift gears a little bit and talk about technology. You know, there's a lot of people, especially small businesses, who see technology as something to fear rather than an opportunity. And we are going to see massive shifts in AI and driverless vehicles in all sorts of things that are, are going to radically transform our lives, I think the same way e-commerce did a decade ago. So what's your view on this? Yeah, I think technology, because uh, technology is going to destroy a lot of jobs, but technology is going to create a lot of more jobs. Right. And this is for sure. But of course, for this technology revolution, for the artificial intelligence and data technology, is going to fundamentally change a lot of way we think, a lot of the way we do the business. Um, what I worry a lot is that. Uh, Today, a lot of knowledge-based things, computer in the future can do better than men. We should, <laughs> sure. not, yeah, we should not teach our the kids do the things that computer can do better. Right. So the thing worried me is not about the technology. The thing worried about is how can we train and uh, educate our kids in a way that 30, 20, 30 years later, yeah. they can do things that computer cannot do. So you should teach computers, you should teach our kids creative, innovative, team sport, team, you know, team sportship, 
culture. These are things, creativities that the machines cannot do better. And I don't think the machine, uh, the, 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 the technology is going to con conquer people because people have a souls. We have mm -hmm. a value. We have a belief which machine does not have. Don't worry much about that. And also as SMEs, leverage the technology. Without the technology, internet, without the internet technology and data technology, small business has no chance to compete with big companies. Mm -hmm. So by leverage the technology, today technology is so cheap, cost effective, use it just to try to use it. But the thing I want to talk, in, you know, convince the government is that we should not, in order to comfort those technology or killing jobs, they do stupid things. A, I, there's a case study in 18, 1836 in UK, there was an act called the Red Flag Act. Mm -hmm. Because at that time, the UK invented the cars. A yeah. lot of horsemen got very upset and angry. They say, cars is going to kill our jobs. Yeah. So went on demonstration, they went to the government and say, stop this, otherwise we're going to do this and that. Mm -hmm. So the government passed an act called Red Flag. Every car should have a flag in the, in the front. No car is allowed to drive faster than seven miles per hour. No <laughs> car is allowed to drive faster than a horse. If your car is driving faster than a horse car, your license will be taken away. So this is called Red Flag Act. And this is happening today, and it's going to happen in the tomorrow. So the government definitely say, well, in order to protect the jobs like that, they want to kill this. Right. So I think don't be scared. Trust our young people. Trust ourselves. Trust human beings. Mm -hmm. We can do definitely better. It's amazing. So I love this example about, about the horses and the cars. Yeah. So how do today we not fear technology? How do we make room for the new disruptions that are going to have to take place? Because they're going to be massive and there's going to be the old guard that's going to say, well, let's you know, keep this here and let's protect it. How do we usher that in so Canada can continue to be that leader? Well, I think we're already, we're already very much facing it. There is a lot of fear and anxiety about automation, about AI, about technological advances that are going to put people out of, out of business. And yep. there is going to be significant disruption in the workforce uh, and in the way we do things. Uh, but I know that if faced a choice between uh, trying to resist it and hide from it and slow it down as much as possible or decide to get in front of it and figure out how to lead it, yeah. Canadians want to lead. And that's why uh, we're investing uh, millions of dollars in AI, yeah. uh, in quantum computing. We're investing in advanced research from a scientific level so that we can actually uh, be part of figuring out not just how to work AI, but how to work AI in a way that is consistent with uh, our values and our, and our frame uh, that Canada is perhaps wet, better suited to figure out than many other countries in the world. Right. On top of that, uh, we need to start preparing for this transition, uh, which means, yes, making sure uh, our elementary school kids are learning how to code, learning how to be <laughs> powerful users of technology uh, so that they can stay ahead of it, uh, but at the same time, understand the creativity uh, the diversity that sparks uh, innovation, all the things that, you know, as you say, computers find it more difficult to do so that we can be powerful users of technology as it changes. Uh, we need to make sure that we're investing in post-secondary education, in research, getting, sh making sure that everyone has access to the tools to be able to succeed in this changing world. And we're also making sure we're investing uh, in uh, people who are mid-career or even, you know, in, approaching the end of their career who want to retrain, who want to go back to school, who want to be able to, to be part of uh, the the changes that we're in uh, so that they can they can also benefit from technological changes right. and yes uh, there's disruption going on but a country like Canada with the size with the education with the scale we have and with the investments and approach we have and also with that diversity when you talk about things computers can't do uh, and and the challenges come 
When you get a room filled with people from every different corner of the world, different languages, different backgrounds, different stories, and you set them to work solving a particular challenge, uh, nothing can match the, the innovation, the creativity that comes out of that meeting of cultures and that reflectiveness. So our capacity to say, you know what, we are better suited to figure out yeah. what the future is going to look like and how we can benefit from it and how the world can benefit from it is exactly 